Hi, this is my first random map in my tutorial and it's covering projection mapping. It's based off an old tutorial on projection mapping in Maya, uh, which is a useful one to follow along with because he provides all the pictures that you might need. So I've already built my model and set up my projection camera. So now I just need to go through the process of being able to set up the projections using the, the render man nodes. As a comparison, I'm just going to set up a render layer with a traditional Maya projection on it so that we can compare the two together. So, And also it's not going to interfere with my render man shader so I can delete it later. So I'm just going to assign a standard Lambert override to this which I'm going to apply the projection mapping to. So remember to right click on your file node to create its projection and plug it into my projection camera. Make sure you set the, the fill to horizontal so it doesn't expand your image. And I'm just going to plug in the projection map from that tutorial. So there we go, we can see it's nicely lined up. If I turn on my wireframe, you can see that's, that's already set. So this is what I want to emulate in RenderMan. Okay, so back to my master layer. Take my box. I'm going to use the Pixar shader um, for no reason other than I like this Disney shader. So coming to this, I'm just going to turn the specular off since it's cardboard. Okay, so again we're controlling the base color. So left click on that. Rather than plugging a file in, we need to go to the RIS nodes and come down. And we have these three projection nodes here. Since we're only pulling one image in, it's this projection layer that we want. So first off, at the top we have the file name. So we plug that into the same image. Then in order to get it to align, uh, we need this manifold. This is where it's going to connect up to a, to a camera. If you right click on that, you get given a choice. And since we're doing it from a camera, it's this uh, Pixar projector node that we need. Plug that in. Always does this little crash. Um, doesn't make any difference. Okay, so what do we need to set up in here? Well, first off, we need to set the camera to be the same as Maya's one. Um, I've got them written down, but um, if I wanted to make sure, if I just switch myself to pro projection camera, what it is that you're copying is the focal length and the camera aperture in inches. So if I just drop back to my projector node, my focal length is 35. So set those to be exactly the same. Now in order to get this work, we need this coordinate system. Now when we roll over it, you can see it says use a place 3D texture node. Okay, well, we could make one, um, but as it happens, there was one already made as part of the Maya uh, projection that's not in use, so we can use this one. All we need from this is its name. So I'm just copying that, going back to that projector node, I'm going to paste its name in there. Not quite there yet, because we need it in the same place as the projection camera. So we could do this with uh, orient constraints and position constraints, but since I've got the comic tools, which I highly recommend getting, um, I'm just going to use that. Within there, we've just got this snap, which basically puts them in the same place. Um, I tend to also like to put that place 3D node underneath my projection camera in case I move my projection camera later. So now they're lined up in the correct place. There's one other thing that uh, we have to do. So I need to drop back to the projector node, scroll down under 2D parameters. We need to invert T because basically the render man shader is the other way up uh, to how we want it. So if I just tick that off and do a quick render. We'll see that it's lined up nicely here. Okay, so let's escape out of that. Um, so just to run the same thing for the floor. So I've got the floor there again. I'm going to give it its own unique shader. Just again, turn that specular off. So again, into the base color, we plug in 
one of these projection layer nodes. This is because it's going to have its own unique image, otherwise I could of course link it up to the previous one. So here I've got a version of the image again off the uh, tutorial that doesn't have the box in. So I'll assign that. Needs a manifold again. If I right click I now see that my other manifold already exists. So I can select that rather than creating a unique one. So I can just select that and plug it in and it's all done for me. So again, I'll do a quick render. We can see that it's nicely got everything that we might want in it. Now I've got a couple of lights in here already to uh, light this scene, just a simple environment light and an area light. And we can very quickly get a really nice look to it. Now obviously the key advantage with this sort of modeling technique is that we can then move the camera. We will see some replication of, of the texture, but in my next tutorial I'll run through how to uh, bake down these textures to repaint them, because again that's a slightly different setup to uh, what we're normally used to. So here we can see that replication of texture that we need to paint back out again. Okay, so hopefully this covers projection mapping. It's reasonably simple to get camera projection mapping working with RIS. It's just slightly different to the standard Maya setup.